It cost exactly $205,147 to get the piece of paper hanging up on the wall behind me. Yep, you heard that right. Today, I'm sharing with you my journey. At the end of this video, you will have understood and heard and hopefully learned from the beauty that came out of the burn, the success that came out of the struggle. If you failed the bar exam, I just need you to know that you are absolutely capable of passing this thing. And if you're about to write the bar exam, please take away the nuggets of wisdom that I learned. They were hard earned for sure. So here it is. Here's my story. My bar exam journey pretty much starts at the end of law school, like many. Basically, I decided that alongside working, I was going to study for the New York bar exam. I'd set out enough time. I was very committed and dedicated and I put in hours and hours and hours. I was doing eight hours study every single day after work and giving it the best that I could. I'd signed up to this big ticket provider, which was all that I knew. And basically, I just thought if I read through all of these outlines that they had sent me, if I used those resources, if I answered all the questions that they'd given me, if I watched all the lectures and memorised all the outlines, of course I was going to pass, right? Wrong. The point is, I knew I wasn't stupid. In the past, I'd always been a hard worker and because of that hard work, I'd got the results. So at secondary, I'd gone to a comprehensive school, I'd worked hard and got into a grammar school. I then worked hard there and got into a Russell Group University. And then at that Russell Group University, my first set of exams, I made the honour roll. So I was in the top percentage of students. And then fast forward to my final year of law school, I was awarded then what was one of the highest grades, if not the highest grade ever given by one of the employment law professors, who was a leading author, writer, academic in his field. So I felt that I was best placed to just do exactly what I was good at doing, clearly academically, and that was gonna be enough to get me through the bar exam. And ultimately, I was so wrong. So I took this course by a big ticket commercial provider. They were all that I knew at the time. Um, and I followed exactly what they said to the letter. It was one of those, if you do X amount, you are guaranteed to pass the bar exam kind of setups. And I thought literally by just doing that, that I would pass. Um, so when I walked into to the bar exam, I had memorized every outline. Like if you cut me open that day, I probably would have bled outlines. I had it all down to the T and I walked in thinking, I've got this. Um, for context, I had done the NPRE and scored really, really well on that, enough that I was going to be set. I had also passed the New York Law course and New York Law exam first try. And so quietly, I was confident. I thought i would surely done enough off the back of everything else. I'm just going to walk through the UBE. That's the uniform bar exam. And oh my goodness, how wrong I was. Um, so I, I ultimately, I had done so much black letter law, letter law memorization that I'd done it to the exclusion almost of essay and MPT and MBE practice. And ultimately the bar exam is a professional exam. They're testing you on your ability to lawyer, like the skills. Obviously it's not exactly the same as in practice, but to pass it, you need to practice much like doing your driver's test, right? You didn't learn to drive a car by reading the car manual that came with it when it was like unpackaged, it, you know, that says like, okay, congratulations, you've got a steering wheel, this is an automatic car, this is manual, whatever. You learned to drive your car, most likely, um, by actually practicing. You know, that's why we book instructors courses. Obviously you need to know the laws of the road, which again would be akin to your black letter law, but you need to practice the bar exam. You need to actually drive the car. And I just missed that. Ultimately, I went on to repeat this exact same mistake, costing myself $10,147 in failure fees. And honestly, I didn't feel good for it either. I was now broke, dejected, um, feeling honestly pretty sorry for myself and wondering logically, like, if this was ever going to be for me, maybe this was just a sign that I was just never supposed to be a lawyer, I guess. Um, I'd come to what was the logical conclusion that the reason I hadn't passed was because I was absolutely effing stupid. That was it. And how wrong I was. Honestly, it was just down to the lack of practice actual questions and not practicing the strategy that the bar exam was actually going to test me on. Um, so honestly, like if you do anything, use real practice questions. <laughs> that is the first thing I would say. <laughs> so in absolute sheer desperation, looking at my MPRE and MYLE scores, which were going to expire if I didn't do something about this, I turned to the internet. I remember I hammered into Google what to do if I failed the bar exam. 
and I came across this incredible Reddit forum, the Bar Exam Reddit forum, if you haven't seen it already, check it out. Um, but it was this wonderful community of people that not only were in the same position as me, but there were people that were now coming back and telling me about their success stories. And I remember as I was scrolling through this forum, I read someone's post. I wish I still had the post because um, that honestly was the start of an incredible journey for me. But they'd read this book called F the Bar by Jessica Klein and they had had massive success from it. So I immediately went on to Amazon, found the book, got it ordered. And when it arrived, the experience was so profound that I could tell you exactly where I was sat in my house as I read the book. I could tell you the color of the post-it notes. I could, I could literally almost hear and feel the metaphorical penny drop in my mind. No, I wasn't stupid. Yes, I did have it in me to do what it takes. And yes, I was gonna pass the bar exam. Next attempt, I was gonna do it. The next step I took was to actually search up the author of F the Bar and see what was going on there. And I came across a mailing list, ultimately signed up, and I was sent a link to watch a success story from a formal count, former council table student, Priscilla. And I literally, I remember the moment that I received that email, watched it, and I just wanted what she had. I wanted that bar exam success more than I wanted anything else in the world. And I will never forget her saying that, you know, she just looked on LinkedIn and all these jobs were now a possibility for her. And she just realized she just unlocked this whole other world of possibilities. And I wanted it. Actually, it was more than that. Like I needed it. So I set up a meeting with Jessica Klein, signed up to council table. I gulped, honestly, at the price and the investment because at the time I was, I was working a full-time job, I was paying for a master's, I was basically maxed out in terms of student loans and debt, and I couldn't afford to fail anymore. But I just knew in my soul that if I did this and I truly invested, if I made this payment, and even though it was gonna be difficult, I was investing in myself, I was gonna do it and I was gonna pass. I was so, so sure. And ultimately, I'm so glad that I listened to my gut because that's how I got the piece of paper hanging on the wall behind me. True to form, I started bar exam study and life just lifed me. We obviously had the pandemic. I was working full time in a minimum wage job. I had family care commitments and I was studying for a master's. I could not have spread myself more thin. And I'll never forget, there was this one particular night when I'd finished a long shift, I'd got home, just finished food, started studying at midnight and I was about an hour in and it just suddenly hit me, the gravity of what I had to cover. And we were like a month out from the, from the bar exam. And silently, because everyone else in the house was asleep, I cried so hard. It was actually the most bitter cry I've probably done in my entire life. And it, it kind of chokes me up now actually thinking about it. Um, but in that moment, that was the moment that I decided I was gonna become a lawyer. I knew that the choice here was basically cancel it and just call it quits or dust my knees off, pick myself up and go back 10 times harder. So that's ultimately what I did. I knew that I had to speak to my tutors. So that's what I did first step because they, they were included with the program. And I, I then pivoted and to cover the material that I needed to do, I now had to start my day with 50 MBEs. So already I had limited time. And the thing that I had to sacrifice for these last few weeks ultimately turned out to be sleep because that was the only time that I had available. So I think I was basically sleeping for three to four hours a night and the rest of the time I was studying for the bar exam, doing my masters and working or taking care of family. And honestly, it was the toughest, toughest few moments, chapters, whatever you want to call it, of my life. But I made it. I don't and know the I... late nights, early starts. I was, I don't know, crippled with a little bit of sleep deprivation. My blood was now caffeine. But I walked into this next bar exam, not just feeling like I knew all the law and so I should pass but I knew I would pass because I knew I'd now seen every single essay since 2016 and done it four times. I had done thousands of NCBE MBEs. I had drilled down into the exceptions to the rule that I was getting wrong. I had memorized valuable content, like the things that were actually gonna manifest into point increases. And I was equipped and armed with a strategy that was gonna change the game for the MPTs. Um, so all in all, I, I honestly, I don't know how to explain it to you better than I sat there about to write the exam and like before I'd had this like, I don't know, like my heart would beat, but I'd kind of be like good nervous, like, okay, we're gonna do this. Um, 
this time I was just so calm. I can't, I, it was so profound. I just knew I had to execute and what I was gonna do in this exam was literally what I'd been doing through practice. Like I was doing another study block, like in terms of time, in terms of effort, in terms of exertion. Physically, I was ready. I had all the information. I was gonna be able to sit. I was gonna be able to focus and I was gonna be able to execute and get that license, get that pass. And obviously I did because the certificate is on the wall behind me, um, but it wasn't without challenge. Um, so, oh gosh, my bar exam challenge. So basically I was starting the MPT, which is the first portion of the bar exam and saw the question. I was like, okay, cool. I know exactly what I'm doing. I know where to go with this. And through council table, I had been given what's known as the speed sheet. So basically a strategy to be able to structure a passing answer within minutes. Like it's wild how much it works. And you just know exactly, again, through the workshops and the trainings, I knew exactly where to look between the file and the library to just pull together and craft this answer. And it was gonna be exactly what the bar graders were looking for. And I was gonna pass and I was gonna go into the actual essays. Before they'd even tested me on the law, I knew that I was gonna be in the best possible position to maximize my score, which is a really reassuring place to be. And that's why I'm so passionate about council table because I want that for you. I don't want anyone to be sat there like bricking it and thinking, oh my gosh, this is a nightmare. Like I've wasted time, money, effort, like all the stuff, all the normal things that you feel. And so this is why I'm such a passionate advocate, like advocate for the program because it really actually works. So anyway, Started the exam, I was in the first MPT, and about 20 minutes in, I got the white screen of death. So I was about 20 minutes into the first MPT, and I got the white screen of death. Like, my laptop went. <laughs> and honestly, like, this was one of the moments when I was like, is this like a hoax? Like, what do, what do I do with this? Like, I literally am not in a position to fail this bar exam. I'm not failing, I'm gonna smash this thing, so get me back online, was the sitch. Um, so basically I had to call um, ExamSoft. I was out of the software. Um, I think it's ExamSoft or Examplify. Anyway, the exam software. You, if you write in the bar exam, you'll know what it is. I've taken so many exams since I can't remember the exact name of the software, but anyway, I was out of it and I remember I called them. And um, yeah, I was basically out for what was basically about 20 minutes from memory. Um, anyway, and basically it turned out there was this massive server outage and it booted a whole load of people out. And I now had to wait for this code to be generated so I could get back in. So all in all, I was out of the exam for about 20 minutes. Obviously my first concern was have I lost all of the work that I've just done for 20 minutes. And also now that I've been out of the exam for so long, I'm just not familiar with the question, where to navigate, like the file in the library, like everything I've just kind of read. So there was a little bit of nerves, but I just sat there before I hit, like enter to go back into the exam. And I just like had this sense of calm, like fall back on your training. It's literally just by muscle memory doing what you've been doing already. And so I did, I executed and I wrote the answer. I moved on to the second one and ultimately I passed the bar exam. Like, so irrespective of that disaster, I passed. Then fast forward to the afternoon, um, there was the typical question that people like to talk about on Reddit where it was a unique blend and people were like, oh my gosh, what the, what on earth was that blend of question that the, that the bar graders gave us, bar examiners gave us. Um, so yeah, this like particular question mix had never been seen before. I knew exactly how to answer it. And I remember as I answered it, I was like, I know people are gonna be struggling on this because it's unusual, but because I'd seen every single essay of the one subject since 2016, so the modern bar exam, and the same for the other subject that they just mixed it with, I knew exactly from the cause of the question, from the fact patterns, exactly what the bar graders were asking me to talk about. And so it was literally like, I don't know, like, you know, the beautiful mind moment or like when you see the person like in a film and it's like, they're just crafting it and they're pulling it and they know exactly where to look and it's just like jumping out at them. That was literally what I had doing this essay. Like I knew I was gonna pass it, because of my training, because of my practice, I was equipped. I had basically done my driving school and they'd given me the three point turn or the parallel park or whatever it was. And I was doing it. Like I wasn't even, not. I'm not gonna say thinking because it was muscle memory at this point. Like I was so well prepared. Then I went into the MBEs and for the first time in my life, I didn't hit like zone out in the middle, like in the middle of the MBEs, I used to like when I'd done previous sits or like attempts, I'd zone out halfway through and then I'd be really fatigued when I got to the afternoon session and I'd just feel a bit gross. I don't know how to explain, <laughs> explain it beyond that. This was so different. I was fresh. Like I knew how to stay focused. I had learned about myself through this process. So 
yes, the days that I woke up and did 50 MBEs to start the day, they worked. Like it was not in vain. And the knowledge and the experience and everything that I was bringing into this bar exam with me, again, from all of my previous attempts was not lost. I knew that, for example, you know, halfway through the exam, um, I, I would need a coffee. And so I had managed to wean down my caffeine intake. So ultimately I didn't need to take a coffee. I'd got myself like the little caffeine tablet so that actually I wouldn't even need a coffee if I did need a coffee. Like just little things about that. So like if you find yourself in the position that you are retaking, everything that you've been through isn't lost. That knowledge isn't lost. You're adding on, like that's all you're doing. And if this is your first time taking it, take all the experience and the wealth and the knowledge that that cost me honestly like this this cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars and i'm so it's such a tremendous privilege to be able to share it with you so that you don't make the same mistake so honestly hand on heart i view my expense positively i would not be able to talk authentically about the bar exam and this program that literally works if i hadn't been through the journey that i went through and it's a tremendous pleasure and privilege to be able to give that back to you just as a gift, like by watching this to share that with you. So the one thing that I, I guess I want you to take away from this video is you are so capable of achieving your dreams. Yes, there will be setbacks sometimes. Yes, it will be difficult. But if you can, if you failed and you can manage your emotions and you can come back, oh my goodness, you are going to be a relentless lawyer. And if this is your first time taking the bar exam and you can take what I learned and put that into practice and pass first time. Not only have you saved yourself sweat <laughs> in terms of like output, you've saved yourself time, you've saved yourself money and view it like you've just saved or like saved that $205,000 that I spent. And like, if that's the case, then what a win and what a tremendous privilege for me to be able to share with you. Um, so that is it, there you go. Um, that is my story. The, the program actually, you know, it, it worked so much that I wasn't, not only did I come out of the bar exam a little bit tired and a little bit, you know, just like, oh, thank goodness that's over, but I wasn't fatigued. And honestly, that stood me in st such a good stead because two days after the bar exam, I had to submit my, my dissertation for my master's. Fast forward to bar exam results day, I passed. I remember I screamed, I called my partner, I called my family. They thought someone died because obviously I'd opened this email and found out that I'd passed and I had achieved this incredible thing that I'd wanted for so long. And oh my goodness, now did I really appreciate what I'd done. Um, I had also, I then found out shortly afterwards that I had scored one of the top grades awarded for my master's for my dissertation. So honestly, like if that's not a testament to the council table program, to the methods, the strategies and everything, I don't know what is. Um, I owe my license to council table and that is why I'm now very proud to be um, one of the tutors on the program and support people to get their licenses and to share as much information as I can here on this platform um, with you. I, I wanna give you that, that authenticity. I don't want you to waste your money and invest in things that aren't going to get you that pass. You've worked too hard. You've worked too long. You've invested too much in your law school education and everything else and everything that you've overcome. If, I don't know, you're a first generation law student. If this is, I don't know, if you're a fifth generation law student, if you've traveled across the world, if you're licensed in multiple other jurisdictions, whatever walk of life that you come from, you've come too far to sell yourself short and not commit to yourself. So there it is. So now you know the cost behind the certificate up there on the wall. It did cost me $205,147, but it was worth it. And honestly, I am now qualified. I've moved on with my life. I'm sharing my journey with others. I've helped countless others now get their lawyer's licenses and that's all that I need. So now you know the story for anyone that's been asking. It's now here, it's live, it's out there, it's for you. Um, so that was today's coffee-sized chat. This is Catch Up With Kai and I will see you at the next one.